Our Lord likens us to the man who sought to build a house on solid foundation, that is, the humble man, because the rock in which he th sought to build his house, his foundation on, was none other than the rock of Christ. And so, our Lord is first instructing us that it is absolutely necessary to have faith in him and what he has revealed in order to build that solid house. But a house, he points out, clearly must be built, and it must be built on a rock-solid foundation. And so the Lord is instructing us very clearly that it is not merely faith alone, but we must show the works of Christ in all that we do. And this he shows very clearly when he gets to the second point of the parable. For he says that the one who does not build upon the solid rock of Christ builds his house basically on a foundation of sand. And ultimately, when the trials and the tribulations of life come, one stands, that is, the one built on the rock of Christ, the other crumbles because it was built on sand, that is, it had no substance. And ultimately, what our Lord is referring to is there are two, two foundations, two kingdoms. One is built on trying to overcome our sinful tendencies, the other is built on sin itself. And hence, that is precisely why with the, with, when Protestant came into being, it was an empty thing and built on sand, and ultimately it has fractured and divided into untold thousands of sects because it was not ultimately built on the rock-solid foundation of Christ because it had as its primary tenant faith alone, that is, faith without the works of charity. And so we see very clearly how these two foundations function in society, for ultimately all society seems in our day and age to be constructed in some form on, a, on not the rock solid foundation, but on the foundation of sand, that is the justification of sin, and hence most of modern society is constructed on the unspoken of sin, one that is not often mentioned in our day and age, that, that is its economic policies are really none other than the practice of usury, which always and everywhere undermines the family unit. And so the rock-solid foundation of Christ always exalts and holds out the family unit as the primary unit in society. And so when we do not build a house on when we do not build a house on a rock solid foundation, we see that it is only not bad for the individual that each and every one of us have chosen to pr pr pursue a sinful activity, yet it also has an institutional effect for our society is built with some primary principles, primary tenets amongst them in our own country is the principle that every mother has the right to murder her child through the sin of abortion and every father has the right to abandon his wife through the sin of divorce, that is, leaving the lawful wife one has. And so we see very clearly that no society can stand on these principles for they are contrary to the principles of Christ the Rock. And so we turn this day to she who alone built up to society. For when the mother of God, married to St. Joseph, said yes to the angel Gabriel, that that moment was present in society, the primary unit of, and, and, the, and the exemplar of all family units, that is the Holy Family. And so we must strive to see its principles instituted and most especially we must see it defended by sound laws based on the principle of Christ, that is, sound laws that build a society on a rock-solid foundation so that it perdures. And ultimately, we see that while that society may not, may not be political, it is already present in this world because it is the society of believers that is 
Holy Mother Church. And so that kingdom of God is truly present on which one seeks to build his house on the foundation of Christ as is present that counter, that anti-society of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, which is ultimately headed by the, by the enemy of mankind. And so let us strive always and everywhere to reflect upon this most profound mystery and let us always reflect that when we choose sin, we ultimately choose nothing because sin is an absence of good. And when sin becomes so widespread in the world, then the very governments that govern mankind become sinful themselves and they have no substance and ultimately they will pass away. And we know this very clearly from history for how many of those so-called great cultures, ancient Babylon, ancient Egypt, ancient Rome, ancient Greece, exist in the form that they had. They do not because ultimately they were destroyed because they built their foundation, not on the pursuit of, of faith, hope, and charity, but in the pursuit of the seven capital vices. And in their pride, they were all tumbled. And we see very clearly this happening almost from the beginning. For when Nimrod sought to build the Tower of Babel, he was simply seeking to construct a building that is a society based not on the pursuit of Christ, but on the pursuit of sin. And so in his pride, he too was crushed by the Lord who could not permit him to go much further. And this is what must always buoy us up in hope, for often we are tempted to despair when society becomes so depraved that it defends neither mother nor father nor child, but throws each and every one to the wolves and hence that throws the whole of humanity to the wolves. The Lord always and everywhere intervenes and will come and clean up the mess. But there is a price to pay, for we must be certain at that moment that we are on his side, or it is better that we seek always and everywhere to try to cooperate with him in order that in cooperating with him, we help him take down this, the, the, the false foundation built on sand that is the empire of Satan and replace it with that, that society that is built on the solid rock that is Holy Mother Church and her influence over the whole of society, over the whole of the family, and over the whole of all those human endeavor, endeavor, endeavors that God himself has ordained for mankind to, uh, to pursue, but only with one difference. They are to pursue them for the good of the family, for the good of society, and so they must be pursued in a sacrificial way not in a way of the modern world in which it is ultimately considered good to do anything one can to maximize the profits, that is, to grow in wealth, that is, a society built on avarice and a society, hence, that has no regard for his fellow man, nor does it have any regard for that which is most important, that is, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ himself, and so, when our society is built and constructed on the seven capital vices, it forgets that which is most important, that it is a creature and that it has a God and that he is a good God and he must be called upon in order for mankind to pursue good and to do good. For it is from him that we must receive all that is, all that is necessary, that is his grace, in order to be certain that we are cooperating in his mission to redeem and to save, not to destroy. And ultimately, that is our Lord's point. If we pursue sin, then we will be destroyed. And that destruction often occurs even in this life, in societies that have become so depraved that the Lord has no other choice. And so, let us beg his mercy for our nation and for all the nations in the world so that in receiving his mercy, they ultimately receive Christ and hence begin to construct a foundation and a society on a much more solid footing, much more solid ground because it is constructed on love of Christ and then love of neighbor for our Lord's sake so that we may truly work out our salvation here in this life in order to join the angels and saints 
praising our good God together for all eternity in the life to come. Thank you.